been exploring the world of TikTok. My goodness, that's funny. I, it's, I, I, uh, it's bizarre. That the world of TikTok. The world of TikTok is hilarious because it's like a combination of like, it, it, because here's the thing, right? It's mostly a bunch of Gen Zers discovering stuff that we already know. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd agree. I think I would agree. Definitely, it's, just, it's, it's a weird app. Yeah, weird you go, app. You, you're skimming through it and suddenly you're like saying, "Have you heard of this? Have you seen this?" Like, dude, that's <laughs> we know this. Like, you stop this nonsense. It's when, it's when you see them reacting to songs and they don't know the the words, lyrics, or anything. And you're like, dude, these were literally out like 15 years ago. So just shut the fuck up. <laughs> go away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. swipe up and go. <laughs> anyway, amazing. <laughs> You are about to experience Trash Cinema. everyone and welcome to another episode of the trash tapes one man's trash another man's treasure i am your host johan chapal and the inflictor of pain and once again i don't have my regular victim and dj edward harvey he is still sawing stuff out with his house apparently it must be a very big house there's a lot of stuff going on boxes <laughs> being moved uh things need fixing you know we his, his man den has not been made yet and so i wanted to fill the gap a bit more and i got myself a very, very, very special, very, very, very special guest who I, I've been wanting to get on the show for a while. And so I have you now. So this is Super Freak Media's Liam Banks. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey. I like the use of fill the gap there. I thought, yeah. I thought that was appropriate for the film we're about to talk about. Indeed. <laughs> we're, oh, we're covering a very, very special movie. And I, 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 I don't know why we're doing it, thinking back it now. But you know what? We, we, this we, is we, all we, you. It's, it's on me. Because you gave me other movies, but I looked at my list and saying, like, ooh, this one is something we need to talk about. But yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's um, I'm, and one reason why I've also got you on is because I picked this movie, particularly because one, it's a horror movie. Well, kind mm-hmm. of. It is kind of a horror movie. Um, and since you are a horror movie aficionado, I want to bring you in and get your genuine horror opinion on this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the, the horror opinion was just that it was horrible to watch or if it was a horror film. But um, no, thank you so much for, for having me on. It's a, a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> So there you go. So just for the new listeners who do not know who you are, uh, could you just give me a little bit of a uh, drop a bio, as it were? Drop, drop a bio. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so my name is Liam. I work um, uh, at Super Freak Media. We're a production company based in Derby and Nottingham, primarily obviously in the Midlands. As you said, Johan, we make uh, short horror films. Uh, horror and sci-fi and genre is where we really like to play. And um, we've actually obviously collaborated with you a few times through the years as well, which is mm. which has been ace. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically us. We just love all things horror and getting to talk about it is always a win in my eyes. So So thank you. And the fact is, as well, you end up you you do end up talking about because you you yourself got a podcast now, haven't you? We do indeed, yeah. Um, no calls allowed. A monthly podcast, mainly horror based. Um, our host Jono, um, who is also like our DOP at Super Freak Media, he he likes to throw some Nicolas Cage themed trivia in there every every month, which <laughs> always makes us happy. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if you like trash tapes, you'll probably like our podcast and vice versa. Brilliant! I, I, I've, I've listened to a couple of your episodes, and they they are quite cool because it's just having just like a bunch of friends around after binging a ho- binging like a That's horror it. movie mar- marathon and trying to talk about the nonsense they've just witnessed. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, obviously with lockdown and everything, COVID mm. and all that jazz, it's it's been nice to still get together every month. And I don't know, as if we were just having a few beers or whatever and watching a film, um, we, we kind of just do it, but record it for your listening pleasure. <laughs> and in this case now, we're going to we're, we're going to do something. We're going to do something else for your pleasure, because ladies and gentlemen, what we're about <laughs> to talk about today is the movie <sighs> Teeth. Another step. All right, what can I do for you, miss? Is this your first time? Okay, 
so I imagine you have no idea what to expect. Not really. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bite you. Just lie down. Put your feet right in here. Okay. Are you sexually active? No, I just want to be checked out. Okay, then. I think there might be something weird going on inside. What's, what do you put in here? There is something inside of me that's lethal. Didn't taught. What? It's Latin for teeth. It's what's inside me. Are you afraid? This is too weird. Just wait. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so we're talking about teeth. Um, the reason why I, I want to talk about teeth is because, to me, this is one of those weird movies where... Mm-hmm. To, I want to know what everyone's experience was with this movie because for me, I found out this movie in the same way as I think most people did through word of mouth when people were just sort of <laughs> saying like, "Hey, um, have you heard about the Killer Vagina movie?" As like, what? <laughs> what? Absolutely. What? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was going to say I, I was really curious to see how you heard about it, but it sounds like it was somewhat similar. It was yeah. literally just the whisperings of Killer Vagina movies. <laughs> Yeah, and so basically, yeah, I think it was like a friend of mine because uh, I used to go to the film society. Obviously, look at me. Obviously, and, um, Flag, and so, drop that in there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I did. I did eventually become the president. But still, oh, there we go. Point being, point being was is that um, I, I was hanging for a friend from the film society, going around, and he was before I became like really into looking for the grit. He went up to me and said, "Like, I've seen this movie, and it's about a killer vagina." <laughs> and I said to myself, going, excuse me, I need to see this nonsense. And, he sh- and the thing was, he gave it to me. Like, he gave it to me. This is, this made the scene even dodgier because I thought, like, is this softcore porn? Because he did, he did he gave me it on a DVD. That's clearly like a time that was like a rip DVD. <laughs> Do you know what? I was exactly the same. The way I watched it, I'm sure it was like a ripped DVD from, like, a friend. It wasn't a legit way to watch it. I mean, I probably shouldn't confess that, like, anywhere but oh come uh, on movies like what 13 <laughs> years ago now it's fine well yeah yeah time spent i've, I've done my time for that crime um, but yeah that is so weird I, I genuinely think that's part of what made it good though is the fact that mm. it did have that bootleg nature about it it was kind of i don't know how video nasties were i imagine mm. obviously because that was before my time but I imagine that's how that was. Like, they'd be like, have you seen Evil Dead? Well, so-and-so's got it on VHS somewhere. That's yeah. all right. And yeah, it was very much the same. Um, but I will say, I mean, I can get into this a little bit later, but my viewing experience as well was very, very strange. And I will explain why. <laughs> because I watched the film with someone I don't think it was appropriate to watch the film with. Was it your mother? <laughs> it was my mother, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, I say that me and my mum are very close, and we are. Um, but I, I think that may have been a misstep on both of our parts. Fair, fair. You, 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 I, this, this isn't. This isn't. This is definitely not a date movie or a do it, watch it with your family, family movie. Family movie? No, no, no definitely it's not. De- it's, de- it's definitely a weird family movie. If this is the case. But yeah, it's, I think this is again. It's right. It's reason. I think the reason part of the appeal was is because it felt very underground for some reason. Yeah. Even though it. Even though it had a cinema release sort of at one point and you could buy the DVD on the shelves legitimately, mm-hmm. it felt like it was just, it felt better when you found it from a friend who's slightly sleazy, found it from a back alley and said, hey, you yeah. want to watch the Killer for Joy in a movie? Said, All right, Barry, <laughs> stop it. And then you just, That's so you weird. just I got enjoy it, Barry it more. Too. Oh, it's always a Barry. It's always uh, Barry. Yeah. But yeah, it's genuinely the thing. I feel like that added to the, the mystique of this movie. 
is a two thousand is a two thousand seven um, American horror comedy movie written written and directed by Mitchell Lichtenstein. Right, so <laughs> it's a low budget affair with only uh, cost only two million to make, and and how and it was and it it basically it became the darling of the ball at Sundance Film Festival. Right, this is how it got very popular, and then it was picked up by the Weinstein Company and Lionsgate and all that kind of stuff to have it distributed into cinemas, and then it, then it popped out in the United States in a year later in cinemas under <laughs> like underneath everything. But a lot of a lot of film a lot of film nerds and festival lovers have already seen this movie yeah. and said like. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it makes me put to question slightly. <laughs> and I want to ask you, I want to ask you, because you and I go to film festivals at times. Yes. Do we feel like we're more forgiving of weird movies in film festivals? I think definitely, yeah. I think there's there's something obviously different about when you go to a film festival than when you're paying a ticket just to see like a mainstream movie. However mm. hipster that sounds, but like yeah. you kind of go into it um, knowing that you're probably going to see something that you shouldn't see ever, mm. um, which is always a good thing. Like, I mean, for me, always the thing that comes to mind is, is like Mayhem Film Festival here yes. in Nottingham. Like that that showcases, I very much feel like, I mean, I'd have to look, but I feel like Teeth would have very much been something appropriate for their lineup, like yeah. one one uh, one year. So I don't know. There, there's a lot of films that come to mind that I've seen through the years, which mm. I may have only just seen them at a festival, but that's mm. kind of part of the experience. I think you're surrounded by people who are wanting to see something a bit bizarre, which isn't like a superhero movie or a blockbuster or whatever. Yeah. And I think that's... I think, yeah, we are more forgiving uh, to answer your question, but I think yeah. that's what's special about festivals. Yeah, I, I agree that, you know, we're, we're for forgiving. But then this is the thing, like, this is this is going to be interesting for us because now now this is our second viewing. We've all grown up. We're, we haven't <laughs> gone to the festivals. And I think yeah. by that point, it's also like, oh, it's so exciting. It's all weird. You're going to get some weird stuff you're never going to see before. And then mm-hmm. you feel like the cool cinema snobby kind of hipsters saying, well, I seen this fantastic movie from France where about, about a woman with three breasts who turns into a gigantic, <laughs> huge snake monster and devours all men. And you're thinking, oh, Jesus, okay. Um, <laughs> you're like, oh, we're, we're, we're in for a treat, mate. And then, and then you watch it later and you say, why did I... I, you think like oh you remember watching it but clearly you're watching it in a haze and then you yeah, come back I, I think you've definitely got kind of like the rose tinted glasses on haven't you when you're watching films at a festival because yeah. I think I don't know it, it's weird you say that because I do think there have been films I've seen at festivals that are bad but yeah. I think you still kind of fondly remember them because you're united in this experience of watching a bad film with other mm. people. Like yep. the super freak media guys always like go together to these stuff, to these yeah. like events. And I think the bad ones we even talk about like now just as like a joke. So, yeah, you know, as if you paid money to see a bad film in a cinema, yeah. then you could just hate it for life. I think it is different. Yeah, I feel like, because you're doing as part of, yeah, because that's a unity. That's the whole thing of why mm. I did the podcast in the first place. I love talking about bad movies and silly movies and weird movies with other with, with, with other people and just wanted to share <laughs> the love. And that's a thing. <laughs> and it's true. But yeah. it's, it's. I think it is generally, a lot of people have been praising this movie to the, at that time. Um, mm. Look, I'm going to jump very quickly then to the critical reception before I do the history. I know we're doing <laughs> things the wrong way around. But basically- oh I know, right? So basically, <laughs> according to Rotten Tomatoes and a couple of bits as well, that a lot of the a lot of the reviews are very positive. In fact, mm. this is probably one of the only few movies that we've done on the podcast where it's predominantly positive reviews. So, yeah, I um, mean, when I, I when I looked into it, I saw that it was actually certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I know. So, eighty percent of the critics gave it a positive uh, out of out of sixty nine reviews. 80 of them all positive. 69. Nice. Um, basically, a lot of the critics have said that it's smart, original, and horrifically funny. Teeth puts a fresh feminist spin on horror movie tropes. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So I feel like, again, it's stuff from the festival. Like uh, that, these, these are these are all critics who watch in the festival and saying when it comes out you're gonna love it. And mm. this is a different thing when you go to things like Metacritic and other places where it's mostly crowd stuff. Like you yeah. go into IMDb or go into everything else, the reviews are a lot lower. They're like in the fifty yeah. percent rather than the eighty yeah. percent. And I feel like this is a good example of the movie where this is the first one I think I feel where the critics genuinely love it. 
And the fans have just said, not for me. <laughs> I think it's one of those films that on the face of it, you can watch it one of two ways. Uh, like I was saying to you kind of before we started recording, like mm. you can look at it and really deep dive into it in like a film theory way. And I suppose yeah. if you are a critic and it's your job, you're going to look at it with that viewpoint and be like, there's so much to like dig at with this and mm. so much like put up on the screen. But then if you're just... I, I, it just sounds snobbish, but if you're just the average cinema goer who I don't know just wants to see a film about a killer vagina, yeah. you're not really going to go into it with that mindset of being that intellectual about it. So I think that's probably where people switched off because it was silly if you just looked at it in that way. Now, I'd be interested to see how many of these positive reviews came from women and not just old white men, similarly mm. to who made the film. So, Well, here we go. Speaking of which, because this is something I think I found quite interesting, is I, I kind of wish I also had a third person, like a, like a, a I need a woman, basically, in this, yeah. to get their opinion. Mm -hmm. However, here's the thing from the interview. I got an interview, actually, from, uh, I actually got an interview from the Huffington Post at the time when this was doing very popular. And apparently, um, apparently, here's the weird thing was, um, the reaction from it was surprising and most and and it was kind of like this right the the women in the movie mm -hmm. were were more were laughing and rooting more when it happened mm -hmm. while the men were constantly in shock yeah i can i can i can see that i mean i don't think the film paints men in a positive light at all which no. is which is good i think yeah. because they shouldn't be um yeah. but i i guess yeah it does stand apart from other examples of, of films, I guess, where you have like the monstrous feminine in it, in the yeah. monstrous feminine character, because she leans into it, doesn't she? Particularly, mm. obviously, towards the end. Um, yeah. But so I suppose I can kind of see why it would be rewarding as a female to be like, yay, go vaginas. <laughs> But here's sort of the weird thing as well with that. Um, it, it feels like that's from, like, I think from screening reactions. But I would love to see how that worked now to give this woman to, to give this film to a woman and go mm. and say, hey, what do you think of this? Is this all just a bit goofy? And I mm. think maybe this what happened was the horror comedy element, the horror is for the men. The yes. women find it like a, the women find this funny. Yeah. At least that's what they, uh, what he interpreted from the, from the premiere screening at Sundance. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, but again, I feel like, again, that's like a weird microcosm. Yeah. And because the moment this launched out into the cinemas, it didn't do very well. Like <laughs> it's, the movie cost 2 million to make. It only pretty much made 2.3 million back. Wow, that's surprising. It's probably because everyone was bootlegging it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're part of the problem, Johan. <laughs> oh shit, we're part of the problem. <laughs> um, first of all, we need to talk about Mitchell Lichtenstein. So, mm -hmm. Mitchell Lindenstein was an actor. He was a working actor for a little while, but uh, he wasn't doing a lot of work at the time, but he wanted to go back to writing because he always did writing, right? Okay. So here's the interesting thing. Mitchell Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein, for any artist, would recognize that name. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know who that is? Uh, Roy Lichtenstein. Yes, the he is. The pop art guy. Yes, he is the famous, <laughs> he is the son of the famous pop art guy, the one who did the giant comic book panels. I didn't actually realise he was related, which is insane. Um, yeah. Oh, can you imagine having a father who makes like such iconic pieces of art and then this you guy just teeth. makes tea? <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. You're famous, you're famously the guy who made teeth. Oh, uh, but yeah, he's um, also here's another another factoid as well. While we're throwing into it, this this also became a family affair because even though there was because there was also a composer involved, but there was also some original songs played by his brother Dave Lichtenstein. I mean, why not just get everyone involved? I mean, if you if you're gonna make a film about killer vaginas, get the whole family on board. <laughs> it's such <laughs> a family affair. <laughs> but here's the thing, though: the reason why it was a family affair is because, and I'm not joking. For the longest time, he was struggling to get it done because mm -hmm. no studio realistically wanted to touch it. Because I can't imagine why. I because it imagine. is uh, because it is it's it's like it's supposed it's basically it is because it's a killer vagina movie, it's vagina and tata movie. But I feel like a lot of people were looking at it in that point on the surface and saying, "I'm not going to make a movie about vaginas." Yeah, a, a horror movie about vaginas? What are you nuts? No one wants to touch it. So he, so basically, Mitchell Lichtenstein, who even though he wasn't working much as an actor at the time and he was doing writing stuff, he had to kind of beg, borrow, and steal to get the two million to make this movie. 
This is why there's no Jeez. famously, there's no big actors, or there's no, yeah. uh, or, 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 or most of the production is mm-hmm. either locally or was done by favor, including mm-hmm. like the opening titles and some of the visual effects. A lot mm-hmm. of it was done either with favor or just asking really nicely. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of inspiring in, in many ways, because I mm. feel like that's very much, uh, I guess, the level that we're still at with like stuff. Like I know for a fact, mm. if if we were to take the plunge and make our first feature, it would be a uh, a creative affair. We'll say that yeah. because you'd be having to pull all your resources together. So I don't know. It's gone up in my estimations now. So thank you. But for here's that. the thing, though. As well, here's <laughs> another thing which I found quite quite interesting is that when he made this movie, he was fifty. He was 50 years old when he made this movie. Yes. So he wasn't a wow. young spring chicken. He was someone who basically was doing acting for quite some time in the in the 90s and a little earlier on. He was trying to make his own way. And then eventually he got sick and tired of the acting job. No one was hiring him. So he started to write. Yeah. And, then he's, and then what happened was he didn't really want to originally direct. He wanted to move the script over to someone else. He originally wanted a woman to direct this movie. The only reason why he ended up directing the movie was because no one got, no one understood that he wanted the tonal shift between horror and comedy. Mm-hmm. Even even having female director, you're looking for female directors, looking for anyone else to direct this movie because he didn't want to direct. He never directed before. Mm. He he couldn't find anyone who got the balance between making this both horrific and funny. Yeah. Um. And so he decided to say, fudge it, I'm just going to do this myself. And he ended up doing it by himself with no experience and surrounding himself by with people and friends and producers who are all either, who are just either just as weird or just on board of his nonsense <laughs> and just went on with that. When the movie started filming in Austin, Texas, okay, apparently for the first week, uh, the neighborhood they were filming at Gave, was starting to complain because they thought, and I'm not joking, <laughs> that within the first few days, the neighborhood thought they were they were filming porn. I mean, I can I can see I can see where they they go with that because there are some yeah. moments where it is practically a soft core porn film. Practically, <laughs> but the thing was, this is funny. Do you know the very opening scene of the movie where you have the kid in the paddling pool situation, right? Yeah, very disturbing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right off, right off camera. And I'm not joking. Apparently, right off camera, there was a news crew talking about the production of the porno movie that was happening right on set. Jeez, that must have been like an absolute nightmare. But then at the same time, I suppose yeah. any press is good press. So, yeah, again, it's, it's a project that could lean into it, I think. <laughs> the funny the funny thing is, is at the end of it, they actually just said at the end of the newsreel, at the end of it, turns out it wasn't porn. Shame. <laughs> right back to you. And that's literally what it felt like. It's like, oh, shit, like, we want more outrage. We want more outrage. Like, no, it's just... Not porn. It was very oh controversial, wasn't it? I mean, even thinking if yeah. a film like this was made now, I think there'd be a big hoo-ha about it. Um, that's yeah. if a film like that would be made now. Um, but mm. I mean, this is something we have to give credit to him because it feels like no studio wanted to touch this movie. No one understood the tone. No one understood that. So he basically decided to do the whole thing himself in that weird way. And it be- you can see in a weird way that this is his vision. No one's kind of said no yeah I, I think it would definitely have benefited from there being like another person to have bounced off in yeah. that whole process because you can tell there are some decisions that have been made and you're like dude you should have just stepped away from this for a minute and then come back to it or <laughs> do you want to look you do you want to step back and just look at this as the bigger picture yeah it's it's just like I don't know. It, it talks and it comments, obviously, on so much as a film, which is great, uh, which mm. I don't think you always get for independent and cheap horror films. But yeah. it's, um, yeah, there were some interesting choices made in that in that movie. <laughs> but that's the thing is, though, I think this is why the movie is memorable mm. in that way, because it's very unapologetically, this is literally what the guy had in mind. It's all out there. Yeah. And not going to lie, that is encouraging to know that someone can make a movie this bombastic and literally, I think, jumps many hoops and goes over many hurdles yeah. to get to that point. Like, there's so many lines crossed. Yeah. That you, sit there, <laughs> you sit there going, Ugh. but it doesn't make a good movie. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, so. for, that's, that's for everyone to decide. I would definitely recommend everyone still check it out, even though we're probably not the biggest of fans. Um, but you definitely but, need to see it at least once. It's like a bucket list movie, I think. And other than the crew, which I feel like this kind of shows more about filmmakers rather than uh, than 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 anyone else, the, the at least the heads of the filmmaking department. So, for example, makeup, uh, the prosthetics, the DOP, the producer, everyone else was sort of like, "Yeah, we're all on it, yeah." And everyone's like, <laughs> "I don't know, uh, yeah." So everyone was very sheepish. It's kind of the reason why, for a lot of the actors, this is kind of their first big role. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, what a way to start. <laughs> what a way to start that film it's kind of funny when you go through like some of these guys sort of uh like imdb pages all the actors and the first thing you say famous for teeth yeah and it's, yeah. it's always going to be there and you're not gonna lie this does make it cult i think it's still maybe just as memorable because um i was actually surprised at how much i remembered like so vividly from that film mm. and i don't know again if it was because when i first watched it i was at that age where like i don't know sex virginity all of that jazz was like something that you're thinking about as a as a teenage mm. boy um but yeah it's it's just a very very strange film and i'd be interested in, i'd be interested to see i know we were talking about tiktok earlier i'd be interested <laughs> to see how this latest generation of new kids would find a film like this whether or not they'd i don't know they'd have this kind of um opinion that it's absolutely exploitative it's the worst thing that could have been made it's awful or whether or not they would have gone into it the same way as we kind of did with this oh my god sex is so scary this just terrifies me even more it yeah. sort of thing <laughs> it's kind of weird because may- maybe that point because i sense like a lot of uh, a lot of um because because everyone because, because this generation seems to be have a far better conversation about sexuality, gender, mm-hmm. yeah. there's far more stuff open to it. Yeah. This might not have as much of an impact anymore because people mm-hmm. I think they'll be sitting there going like, well, we wouldn't act like this anymore. This is not what uh, we would do. Yeah, uh, this feels like this feels backwards. This feels weird. This feels too cartoonish. But yeah. for us, when we watch it, even though it's slightly cartoony, which we'll go for in a minute, we're going to go to the plot. Um, we're, we're, like we, even though we're going through, we might sit there going, "Well, it's a it's an exaggeration of stuff that still happens." Yeah, and you know, and I think that is what makes it different. I think maybe maybe this is one of those movies that's kind of aged like milk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really bad milk. <laughs> it's, the milk in the, it's the milk in the back of the fridge that you've forgotten about. It's been two years and it's turned to cheese. So every time you open that door, you still get a whiff. <laughs> like, Whoa! And, then some, and then someone goes over and says, why have you not getting rid of that milk? And it's like, yeah. for some reason, now it's just a part of it's me just now. Part, yeah, it's just part of the fridge. Leave it where it is. <laughs> it's the weirdest analogy I've ever heard, but we'll go with it. <laughs> wow, what a way to describe this movie. <laughs> Right, so shall we go through much of the plot as we can? Yeah, yeah, I feel confident that I can recall a fair bit. <laughs> okay, so, right, so the movie the movie starts, uh, the movie starts in the, with, with a beautiful wide open shot, leans down towards a bird's eye view shot. And here's something I've noticed throughout all the thing, which made it quite interesting, is your, this, this beautiful scenic, like, suburb, mm-hmm. right behind is a, gigantic nuclear power plant. Yeah, I, I, that was something I picked upon, which obviously you, you literally, you see it like as soon as the, the film starts. I didn't know if that was like their bizarre way of trying to justify maybe how this character got that mutation. Um, so literally like radioactive powers. Yeah, like something kind of, because it's obviously never really explained. I know they kind of delve into the mythos of mm. vagina dentata yeah. a bit later, but... Yeah, I didn't know if that was like just some weird way of just being like, yeah, nuclear power plant did that. So don't don't mess with that. <laughs> uh, here's a weird thing, because I again, I do I do this for all of you. I also looked at the behind the scenes video <laughs> of this and all the people interviewing were describing the vagina and Tata in a weird way as a power. Yeah. So is this in the weirdest <laughs> possible spinneroony way possible, an origin story for a superhero. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it like past them. Like, I think, <laughs> I, I think in some weird way, 
that could definitely be a way to watch this film as some kind of origin story. <laughs> because there is that arc, isn't there? Like discovering it and, and going with it. In this movie, she's a superhero, but this could very easily also turn into some kind of succubus <laughs> kind of supervillain. Absolutely. In an, in an instant, it yeah. could have. Um, so yeah, it goes down. Sees you see the nuclear power plant. It looks very much like you see in The Simpsons, which made me giggle. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then it pans down, and then you just see a couple. You see, you see a couple sort of on the beach. Uh, so it's so sort of like on the front of the lawn, and you've got the kids in the paddling pool. Now, <laughs> I know they're trying to make the brother seem like the most disgusting, like dark sex energy person ever, right? Yeah. Yeah. But this is wrong in so many levels, right? Yeah, I definitely think that was probably the bit of the movie. And I mean, there's a lot that you see in this movie, but that's probably the bit that made me the most uncomfortable. And it still mm. does. And, and like I said, it was definitely something I can remember. And yeah. I can remember it being something like people would talk about in the playground. They'd be like, oh my God, like it's sick how this movie like starts. Um, and it is. And I think that's maybe in some ways how the film will endure is the fact that it it has something so taboo which will always be taboo hopefully yeah. i mean we don't yeah. know what happens in like the future like uh, but i i have a feeling that that incest will always be something that's not encouraged <laughs> So you got Brad and you got Brad and Dawn. They're Dawn, like yeah. kids. So Dawn's like what? A two-year-old? And the brother must yeah. be like a five or six-year-old, long mopey hair, that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And what happens is, is like there's already an argument at the beginning where the dad's always saying, like, hey, be nice to your sister. And mm-hmm. he's he's saying, he she's not my sister. And it keeps going a little bit and saying like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe one day she will be a sister. And I love the, the reaction is really over the top, which I'm not sure again, is done for humor <laughs> or not, which is just like, mm-hmm. no, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like that when directing this film, yeah. uh, there must have been like a process of going, let's just make this a B movie as possible. Yes. Because the music, the acting, everything is just turned up to 11. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's kind of gold. <laughs> yeah. Hey, try to be friends, okay? No, God damn it! Hey! Bill. Just... Got him some slack. That's the yours now. Kim. Ow! Son? What's wrong? What happened? Brad? Oh. Oh, God. Oh, that doesn't look good. Dawn. Honey, are you okay? Dawn, you all right? Well, this is where the tone is. I'm going to describe it. Where the brother just kind of just hops a little bit in the pool and he basically says, now it's your turn. So clearly he's dropped trout to show off his peen, his little tiny peen (laughs) to this two-year-old girl. And then what she decides to do is try and, well, I can't even say it without generally feeling like someone's going to knock into the door and arrest me. So he basically tries to touch (laughs) her, Mm. right? And yeah. then at that point, you don't hear a crunch, but you hear him, you hear the brother literally screaming. And that's because the edge of it, the end of his finger was nearly ripped off. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I still think, you know, watching that film, if you kind of watch it in a naive way, yeah, you might just think that his sisters bit him in a normal way. I think, and obviously it's not revealed until later. Like yeah. even later on, he says, oh, my, my sister like bit me when I was younger. Yeah. But then you realise how dark it is and yeah. how she she bit him. It's, um, yeah, it's very, very odd. But I think an opening scene in a horror film always has to have, like, that spice that's just like, oh, mm. God. So I, I think if you knew what you were seeing, you were a bit like, okay. So basically, this oh. is this is the spice. This is the seasoning into the steak. If you like the seasoning, you you may like the steak. I don't know what. Absolutely. To do. <laughs> it's, it's very bizarre how this is starting off with. So yeah, it starts off with this kind of horrific scene, cut into this weird sort of opening title sequence of free germs, like free cells getting slowly devoured, but one is mutated and eats the others. Mm-hmm. 
I like that. I, I really like the opening titles. I thought they were very clever. They were very clever. But the weird thing about it is I didn't know what it was the first time. So what are we looking at exactly? It only took a second viewing, again, while me watching the the, the really, really bad director's commentary version, <laughs> where I sort of say, oh, I get it. It's really, really good, though. I like it. I think it's clever to help, in a weird way, really push the idea of mutation. Hence why yeah. the whole thing with the power plant. This is why I'm almost yeah. weirdly thinking it's some kind of weird X-Men superhero nonsense. Yeah. But, yeah. Can we talk about the uh, the promise ring stuff? <laughs> yeah. I, I personally... Um, I think those were the bits of the movie I'd kind of forgotten about. Like yeah. I can remember that uh, her being a virgin was like the massive thing. And that was the whole yeah. point of the film, her um, being part of this abstinence group. But I, I don't think, I don't know if in, in many ways, I didn't realize that that was like probably some of the most sinister stuff in the film was yeah. like this weird cult thing that she spoke for and, I don't know. Just the whole thing was like very, very odd. It's obviously a commentary on groups like this. Apparently mm-hmm. the director actually, ge- these groups generally do exist. And all mm-hmm. the t-shirts that you see the people wear, other than the big red ring, which I think is clearly some kind of female <laughs> symbolism of some kind, um, were actually t-shirts that you can buy from these groups. So for example- That's insane. So, <laughs> so things like, like, you know, sex can wait or we're waiting or- or you know, or, or, or the weird one is like that. I'm gift wrapped. I'm like, dude. Yeah. It was. It was. It was very, very, very weird. And I don't know. I think. I think. Yeah. You're obviously dead right. It is a commentary on that sort of stuff. But it's a comment as well on just how like toxic I think not educating kids in the right way can be because mm. it does lead to just bad things happening, which ultimately <laughs> happens in this, this film. Yeah. yeah. And the both scenes, like both major scenes in this thing, because it happens one at the beginning and then one halfway through. They're yeah. all really creepy, especially the second one where basically she's starting to, so basically the second time around, she's brought in as another speaker again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this time around, because she's met somebody, Toby, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, <laughs> and he's like, and, and he's finally gone, no, giving her butterflies and really cute stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. He's, she starts to have a me- literally a mental breakdown yeah right in front of them and i find the kids and i find all the kids talking back to her really creepy like it is the serpent the serpent (laughs) the serpent i think horror and religion particularly christianity has always had a an interesting relationship Mm. and i think horror is grounded isn't it in those morals like you do bad stuff you smoke weed you have sex you do all of these things then you're going to get your comeuppance and i think historically as well there's always been this weird kind of fear of women actually becoming women Mm. like i think women are acceptable and accepted in horror films if they're like teenage girls girls who are like virginal and they've mm. i don't know they're from like a nice well-to-do family mm. um and, and they've not had sex but then as soon as they cross that line and they enter womanhood that's it they then suddenly have to become the monster and they have to become and i think groups like that that actually do exist i mean it's interesting to hear about the t-shirt thing because there were some funky t-shirts in this film <laughs> um i think the fact that groups like this exist yeah. is because of that fear and i think that fear is very real still in in mm. society um mm. uh, even still at the moment yeah i mean like look i understand there's a whole generation now of 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 people who are feeling a little bit more sexually liberated or at least feel more comfortable with that conversation of sex i think and they're just more woke i think woke is the is the key <laughs> word using that word but yeah we, we're, they are more woke than us <laughs> but uh, the, the fact that in, especially in america uh in america mm-hmm. and in like play in like in other countries like africa and other ones where it's literally about sex should be Sex isn't about having fun. Sex is about just being with your significant other rather than yeah. just being exploring your body or whatever it is. Um, all yeah. that really, that, 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 that repression is going to cause some weird stuff. Um, yeah. Like one of the things that bugged me about this movie a bit is at least the first 25 minutes or 30 minutes of the movie 
teenagers don't talk like this. Yeah, I, found, I think what you said there, you hit the nail on the head. And I think it's interesting to find out that the guy who wrote and directed this was 50 years old when this yeah. film was made, because I think that's evident in like the teen dynamic. Yeah. Um, because it's just odd. And I, I think it kind of works to a degree because they are supposed to be odd. Like they're not supposed to be your typical teens, yeah. um, which is shown obviously later on in the school scene where she's kind of victimized and bullied and, and whatever. <laughs> And I'd be interested to see as well how long uh, the director had this weird idea for because I feel like it might have worked. I don't know if he had the idea when he was coming of age and that's what his views of teenagers at that time were. I, I'm not, I don't know. Well, here's the thing though, right? Is um so Mitchell Lichtenstein he learned about vagina dentata in while he was in university and the idea and of the mythos of vagina dentata lingered with him for the longest time because he always found it really complex, odd, and the fact that the so many cultures have literally the same mythos, which is yeah. in order to ki- in order to stop this female monster, a man or an animal in some cases has to go in and defeat the evil woman by yeah. pounding her to death, basically. Um, and so I think he's sitting there going like, well, that why is this mythos constant? Yeah. And I think he wanted to put a spin on it after the long... He want, he, so he's, he's been, he's, at least the idea has been in his head for a long time. What I also yeah. find quite interesting is that he is also openly gay. So, Oh, wow. Okay. So Interesting. <laughs> so again, on top of that, so it isn't like his idea or projection of women. Maybe he's looking at this going like, well, you know, why is women projecting this way almost slightly out of a bubble? So it's not like yeah. his It's not like his sexual repression on women. It's not like looking at him going like, oh, God damn it, women. Never it. It's not that. <laughs> so it's not, so we, we have to step that away slightly in order yeah. to, in order to make that feel less creepier than it could be. Although it's still creepy. Yeah. Still creepy. Um, yeah. I don't know, but I think even maybe as as a gay man, there might have been some fear of, yeah. of the opposite sex, like mm. as well, because I think it kind of it kind of comes with the the territory almost, doesn't it? I suppose, yeah. but I don't know. I think anyone, whether gay, straight, bi, or whatever, when you're at that age, I think the subject of sex and genitals and all of that jazz is just. It's just like aliens, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally aliens. And that's um, the thing is that the conversations for the first, literally the whole conversation for the first like 20 minutes, a half an hour of this movie is literally that. So mm. like in the school scenes, both school scenes yeah. have purpose, are all about biology for some reason. The first yeah. one, and this apparently the whole scene where the, um, where the biology class scene where the vagina is actually literally covered up by a giant sticker. That actually <laughs> happened in a couple, in, in, in an American state where they use the same argument that Dawn used, where basically say, oh, women have a natural modesty. And so we're covering that up while men, because they're just basically the idea that men are just sexual are pigs. beasts. <laughs> because yeah. they're sexual beasts. Everyone, just, everyone knows what a cock looks like, but we should preserve <laughs> the, uh, the image of the vagina as if it's sacred. So, questions? That's it then for the penis. Let's move on to the to the <clears throat> uh, the next page. The female privates. Um, there's something weird in my book. Leave it. I have a two <laughs> sticker. What's it hiding? The state school board has rightly ordered it be concealed. A detailed diagram of, of, of the... Vulva. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Why are they covering that up? That should be obvious. They showed the penis picture. That's different. How so? Sad thing is, Ryan, you'll probably never know. <laughs> right? Uh, Dawn. I think I can tell you how it's different. Girls have a natural modesty. It's built into our nature. It's so depicting. <laughs> I mean, I think that is kind of weird. I don't know if this was the same for you, but you know, even with sex ed at school, yeah. like we didn't really have 
like that much about the female anatomy. Like mm. it was, it was basically how to put on a condom and, and all of this. And, and like, I don't know uh, what wet dreams were and, and all of this sort of stuff, but like, I don't know. I think that's kind of a, a deep rooted problem in our society is the fact that as men, <laughs> we don't really understand a lot of what goes on with women unless you choose to educate yourself. And then in many ways that's difficult to do because it's creepy. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I think I think you're right. Like generations coming up now, I imagine in schools it's a lot more acceptable. Yeah. And I don't think there's been examples of us having, um, I don't know, stickers put over vaginas in textbooks here. But no. it, it, it it's a hundred percent feels believable and like yeah. something that could happen. So. It didn't surprise me when I saw it. I just found it funny, to be honest. Yeah, no, for me, I, for me, I, I for, this is gonna this is gonna sound very weird. Maybe just our impression of America, but I said that's such an American thing to do. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's such it's an like, American thing. You can imagine it being the parents who've had sex to create the children that are yeah. then learning about sex, saying, "No, you can't learn about this." So stop like, it! God damn it! It's like <laughs> stop learning about it. This, this is the thing, right? And this is, and again, I think this is the theme of the movie is. You need to, ed- basically, I think the whole summary of the movie is educate your kids yeah. about how to do sex thing good. Sex good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can sex good yeah. and do it properly and satisfy everyone, then, then all this weird, repressed, horrible stuff won't happen. Yeah. Another interesting factoid, um, a little bit, is that uh, at one point, the go- one of the bits that really bugged me is when they go to the cinema. <laughs> Oh, oh, great! I read about that one. Phil, that's rated R. Oh, I hear it's good. Phil. I'm not saying we should see it. You know what? Even the PG-13 is going to have heavy making out. I'm like, come on! <laughs> like, <laughs> she is literally so far at the other end of the scale, isn't she? Yeah. Like, I think, I think out of that group... You know, if she hadn't have been that uptight, I yeah. think they would have gone and seen the other film. I think she's very yeah. much um, that that person who who just kills all of the joy <laughs> for oh, all of them. Oh, um, oh no! Is she I a- don't know. I think she's that figure, though, isn't she? Like the whole way through until there's that turning point, yeah. and even obviously the way that she's pitched against Brad, she has to be that good kind of figure that's innocent yeah. and lovely. And I think and I think to me that's kind of what bugged me a lot of this movie and really kind of made me almost annoyed at the movie for the longest time because I'm sitting there going mm-hmm. I think it's more like I understand the theme of the movie but it's mm-hmm. a bit hard to get along with it when your lead character is constantly hammering it in mm-hmm. and and really pushing that side of the character for the longest time, including the including stuff like, look, when, like it's this fun stuff. It's okay to watch a PG thirteen movie with slightly heavy <laughs> petting, like no, no, not allowed. Absolutely not. I mean, can you imagine how bad it would have got if they'd have gone to see that film? Because it got pretty bad going to after going to see the kids' film. So, but here's the thing, though. But here's, and here's the interesting thing about that. Um, there was a scene beforehand leading to this with them walking <laughs> to the mall, right? But <laughs> it was cut out mostly because. Uh, Lichtenstein actually wanted to keep it a subtle clue, right? There was a scene where all where 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 they're going through the mall, and most of the advertising is just naked bodies, right? Okay. And but this the thing was, it's them commenting on, hey, look at all these naked people like doing stuff, right? But he kept that for most of the movie. If you look throughout the movie, all the advertisements are naked people. They purposely okay. put all the adverts are naked men and women. Not with their tackles out or with their boobies out, but they're they're at least in their underwear being very sexually suggestive. Yeah. I feel like at the time that was, um, I don't know, it, it, at the time that this was made, I feel like sex was very much a thing, like mm. in magazines, media, everywhere. Mm. Like I can, I can remember there being like stuff about hip hop music videos and all of yeah. this being too much and magazines um, like photoshopping women and and i can remember all of these things being in the news and in the media at the time um so I, I, it's quite intelligent i guess that he would do that in in a subliminal sort of way I, I, yeah and i'm kind of glad they removed that scene because i watched again mm. i have also watched the deleted scenes my goodness the <laughs> thing i have to dive into for this movie um but basically i'm glad they, i'm glad it wasn't pointed out because then i was able to find that out later i was like going mm. Wait, I'm sorry, like there's like a couple of scenes where they're outside with something with an advertisement going, that's literally just a pair of breasts. That's just yeah. literally just a pair of breasts. Or that is literally <laughs> a man in Speedos. And you're thinking, yeah, that's pretty, 
obvious what they're trying to do with it. Swiftly moving on slightly with that, because we have that character sort of there. Can we talk about Mm. Brad? Yeah, I think Brad is literally the anti-Dawn, isn't he? (laughs) And I think from the opening, he's set up to to be that. He... Yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> um, he's literally been, the director actually, when he was directing him, said that you are quite literally the dark sexual energy of this movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- there's a lot of darkness. Literally, his bedroom is dark. His clothing is dark. He has jet black hair. He's he's kind of a creepy looking dude. Yeah. Um, there's something a little bit off with him, I <laughs> think, just by the way that he looks. Well, think about it. We're, we're introduced to adult him, and while Dawn's brushing her teeth, Mm. And he's hiding in the shower. And I didn't and I didn't notice this the first a little bit. But then you suddenly just see a bit of black dot emerge from behind. And it's kind of a good horror shot because you go like that. 100 percent Yeah. And then he she's about to go in for the shower, and then he just goes, Ugh! and he's like, ah, oh, fuck you. You weirdo. He's but- one of these characters, and I think they did this is something that they did really well in that that yeah. film. It's like when you're the scenes with him you feel like you can smell the place and you feel like you probably get some ick on you if you were near him like it feels very gritty and dirty and nasty and Mm. that's kind of what you want yeah and so i think they they evoked that really really well um and yeah i i to be fair i didn't even really think about it all that much but yeah the way that we are introduced to him is literally like a classic horror movie like intro for like a serial killer or something isn't it it's insane i think out of all the characters even though he is also a he's the fucking worst and he's an absolute cartoon <laughs> he is he's quite he's i think out of all the characters he's the only one to me that i feel is even though it's really creepy he's fleshed out in a way that i get what he is right from the off and i know i i basically we know he's the antagonist we know he's the big bad and because Mm -hmm. everything is off nothing is for anyone else's pleasure like there's a scene later on which again made me giggle but i'm not even sure whether it's supposed to be where he's (laughs) talking about where, where he's having sex with his girlfriend you like that No, I do have a perfectly good pussy. I'm sure you do. Well, I do. Other boys like it just fine. Mm. Oh. Well, fuck them then. He's all he's a butt guy. And you can kind of tell because all the pictures <laughs> are in his bedroom of just women with their big butts out. Um, <laughs> and it's just the idea that he's so traumatized from his childhood experience that he won't. <laughs> He won't go near one. He won't go near one, except <laughs> for Dawn's. Yeah, I think that's that's part of something that is incredibly sinister, is the fact that, yeah, the one vagina he wants to wait for is his stepsister. I mean, I don't know if it is like that she is her, uh, the mum's daughter and he's the dad's son, yeah. and the, or if there is some kind of... Mm. blood relativeness going on i don't think there is i think no. otherwise that would be maybe crossing too much of a line yeah um but <laughs> um yeah i think it's it's very weird i think kind of jumping a little bit obviously towards the end as yeah. we kind of said obviously about stuff he actually does seem a little scared before he then makes the adventure into, into, into that. a vagina <laughs> because because, <laughs> because yeah because i think it's like it's the first time he's ever done it there that's kind of it because technically he is a virgin in some ways, isn't he? Like, yeah, I, I, I will know personally, like I won't know names, but I know that there, there are people who do consider doing other stuff than kind of uh, penetrative sex in that way is like not being actual sex. So they're like, oh, still virgins or whatever. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's, it is a thing, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. Apparently that's what Mormons do. Yeah, this is, this is the thing. I think it is like a re- more of a religious thing. Like, the front is sacred. The back, not so much. But no, but this is the thing. This is the thing, right? Um, later, uh, I will, we'll touch on that in a minute. Let, let's talk about little hunky boy Toby, right? So okay. little hunky boy Toby appears at the very first sort of meet. And he's... He's already part of the, the cult group. I'm going to call it the cult group because he is a cult group, right? Um, 
and it's like he, he's like he's just moved from his old place and he's now here and he's going to join the school and he's a and he's cute and hunky he's got the curls and everything else right and he's <laughs> constant- are you a little bit in love with toby i feel like you're a little bit in love with toby no no because what happens later <laughs> hell no so <laughs> okay so the bit there is that he constantly is jumping and defending dawn for beliefs right even yeah. like constantly like the bit like there's a bit obviously we talked about a little bit where he's where she's getting bullied literally on the way to literally into the building which is yep. disgusting and gross yep. um and then in the classroom constantly having defending her and that kind of thing and it almost and and, and there's double dates which kind of lead into but it's very much like n- the sexual tension is so clearly there but they can't do a thing Right. I don't know if it is because I kind of remembered and knew what to expect the second time around, but he came across immediately very manipulative to me. Yes. Um, which is interesting, I think. But- well, well, there's the thing. One of the things that we go to is when the first time a double date happens and they go to like the place where, again, they, they keep talking about sex stuff, where like in, but, like, in a <laughs> terrible way, where it's like, that's the waterfall where people like, you know, do stuff and so, <laughs> and so they sit there and they end up having a whole conversation about virginity and he says mm-hmm. this line and now i get what he's saying it because i've kind of missed what that meant until this now no never you know it's never even been a big deal i just always know i want to do it until marriage so no one's ever even touched yeah. absolutely not <laughs> Why are aren't you? I'm a virgin. It's great. <laughs> In his eyes. Oh. So you did something, but maybe did, did it mean you did butt stuff? Is that what it means? You did exactly, butt stuff. Yeah. You did butt stuff. <laughs> you <laughs> did think, butt stuff. I think that's why it's hinting at, isn't it? Yeah. I think there, there's just so much. Like they they they've slathered it on so thick with the virginity <laughs> stuff in this film. In case you didn't know, it was a film about virginity. <laughs> no more can't take any KAD. There is one scene I genuinely like, right? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it really works well. And it's the scene where uh, Dawn is about to masturbate, right? In yes. the bedroom, and she's fantasizing about Toby getting married together and then doing the deed, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's done incredibly well. I think it's done very yeah. arty and cleverly. Um, in And not even a film snobby way. I just like it. I like the idea Mm. of as it's like there she is in bed in her pajamas, and then she's slowly transforming into the into a wedding dress and the veil and the guys and and then Toby's dress in the suit and it's getting kinky. The legs are opening. Everything (laughs) is slowly. They're all subtly done, and Mm. then it literally cuts to a shot from a B move from an old B movie of a giant scorpion just screaming, and then she just wakes up and goes. What the hell am I doing? And then she, again, in a way, the way that she's both upset with herself and almost angry at herself for saying like, damn yeah. it, I was so close. I had to have this weird ass scorpion thought. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It was the way that it was done was very interesting. And mm. I did think that out of the film, that was one of the strongest like looking sequences it's clever um, but I think and it still kind of stands up now. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, I don't know. Did, did you did you recognise the film at all? That was that was referenced. Because I don't. I thought, I thought there was there was quite an interesting parallel uh, with this. It's um, it was a film from literally fifty years before, so from nineteen fifty seven, called The Black Scorpion. And um, what's funny about that film is that due to a volcano awakening. Mm-hmm it basically unleashes these monsters like giant scorpions from a cave, which I thought was kind of weird because in the film itself, there is obviously this thing with the monster being unleashed in in a cave later on. Um, But I'm a sucker for whenever there is kind of like those old movies, like Mm. on a TV and, and and whatever. Um, But I thought it was quite cleverly done how it did all of a sudden just cut to it and make 
a 50s b-movie absolutely terrifying because i think i absolutely crapped myself when it yeah. happened because i was like okay that that was that was a lot <laughs> and the way the way you discuss what the movie's about okay so a mm-hmm. volcano happens right it erupts yeah. it unleashes these monsters out of a cave you again yeah. if put if putting my film studies hat on i can go and say this is clearly about sexual awakening exactly 100 um, percent, yeah and 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 again in in the very very dry very very dull director's commentary i think he mentions that the movie is from the black scorpion but mentions that the that the scorpions are not necessarily gendered as male no. so it's again the female monster trope kind of mm-hmm. thing and so again it feels like there's loads of thought for stuff that no one's going to notice unless I you're think, a yeah. film nerd that goes back obviously to how we said about the two ways you could watch the film though like mm. if you if you look at it and you're kind of looking for this stuff because i think i don't know if it's it's i think it is a little bit later on but also uh, she she comes across obviously the picture of the gorgon as well, doesn't she? When yes. she's doing her research, so there's so many aspects of 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 seeing this imagery that we we might recognise from pop culture or mythology, but mm. it is all of these women literally being monsters. I think the only thing short that it didn't do was have a clip of like Carrie in there somewhere just to <laughs> hammer home. Like she also hit puberty and turned into an absolute beast. Um, and so... she's covered in blood. <laughs> if that didn't put even more symbolism into it. <laughs> I think, um, I, I think, yeah, it, it does actually stand up quite well. Mm. If you look at it in that way, it was just a bit hokey, but I don't know if that maybe comes from budget and yeah. maybe them not having, a great cast. <laughs> mm, oh, we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> because of having all these weird sexual repressed thoughts, Dawn and Toby end, well, in a weird way, Toby kind of says like, I too have been thinking naughty thoughts kind of thing over the phone. And she's like, <laughs> no, I love the line of this. She basically goes and says like, I don't think we need to meet up anymore. N- not, not even a small group, not even in a big group. Like, I don't want to <laughs> even meet you anymore. And then it gets to the point where she's just like, She's, she literally, out of just pure frustration and everything else and a whole bunch of stuff, out, she literally just says, fuck it, and goes like, hey, yeah. Toby, let's go. Like, let, let's go. <laughs> I say, I brought, I brought my swimsuit. Let's go to the waterfall. That's just how I imagined you in my mind. You're beautiful. You imagined me? That's okay. I did too. You, <laughs> except... With less. I think it's it's kind of kind of cute. I think what we've kind of been saying though about that repression, it, it'll always lead to like a boiling point and a point where yeah, any person. I mean, even in real life, they'll just go. Do you know what? It's like. Fuck it. Just let's, yeah, fuck it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, let's go. Why are we holding back? <laughs> and I admit, this scene ends up being quite cute. It's, it's in like, mm. in like, in like teenage moviedom, this would be yeah. a point where it's like, finally, let's express our love. And they do, they get a little like kissy yeah. and they're, they're playing around and so on. And then it gets to, okay. The this, cave. <laughs> then it gets to the cave. <laughs> and this is where my semi little love for Toby completely gets thrown out the window. Because he's just an absolute a-hole. He's such a chad. He's such a he chad. <laughs> okay, he's such a bro chad nonsense. Because you're thinking, oh, he's sensitive. But then you realise, no, he's literally playing the game. And by this point, it's a rape scene, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think... Um, I will say in, in horror, unfortunately, I, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of of that being something that's included in in horror usually, Mm. because I think it is horrific on its own. Like, I don't think we need movies about it to tell us that it's bad, but I will say that I think in this film, it it did serve a purpose. And I think it was actually done quite well Mm. um, because it didn't seem too gratuitous. And it didn't seem it got the point across. I think it, and and obviously there's a very sudden change of pace yeah. <laughs> when um, when Dawn kind of comes to a realization. Comes um, to realization is the right <laughs> wording for this. Um, um, but but yeah, it's it's. I, I thought it was it was interesting to see Toby turn into a monster. Mm. Uh, I think at this point, as opposed to the lady 
Yeah. I, I think I feel like he stuck out as more monstrous. That's the and, thing. Out of the whole movie, when this happens, it becomes mm-hmm. rent because it's not just like a little thing. No, she's he's holding her down, gagging mm-hmm. her. She's doing the whole thing, and then she he says the best line in the movie for me, and he literally says, "I haven't even I haven't jerked off since Easter." <laughs> That makes it all okay. I mean, I'm not too sure that we even know what date this is set. So this could have literally been like last weekend. We don't know. We don't know. Like, we we don't know how long this has been. It it could have been a month. It's like saying, I held out for you. Absolutely. Well, well, Toby, thank you so much. You just go at it. You do what you want. It's disgusting. It's almost almost a horrible... I think it represents, if I were to go into a little bit deep dive, you know that weird sort of mentality of how nice guys say, hey, I've been nice to you. You owe me something. Give me something now, And he is totally the, oi, I have been, mm-hmm. I haven't jerked off since Easter. So. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Well, uh, forgiven. It's, yeah. It's, Let it's me insane. just slip it in. I think what's weird as well is the fact that it's still as relevant as ever. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we still have that kind of mindset by a lot of guys um, mm. where they feel like women owe them something, um, unfortunately, which I, I don't know. I think that's the thing that I probably love most about the film is the fact that then it does change into something else from this point on. And we're like, okay. I think even as a male viewer, I was rooting for for her. And I suppose that's a good thing because I think good. if you weren't sitting on that side of things then there's something wrong with you as yeah. a viewer. <laughs> I, think, I think that's, again, there's a reason why Toby becomes so monstrous is because you, <laughs> it's so hard to defend that, which is why it's so wonderful when you fu- when when it all comes into it, he's she's terrified as all hell, and then you hear the dreaded crunch. Yeah, I think I had subtitles on when I watched this, um, and even then it was like something like squelch, splatter, crunch, <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's his penis. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the first sign of that happening. So, he, so, so when that happens, face turns completely pale. He's all like. Off done. You see a you see a sh- and here's the thing, right? You see it. And I think that is what I think to me, to a point, I get it, it's supposed to be horrendous, but mm-hmm. it lingers on for way too long sometimes of this yeah. prosthetic, weird ass stump of a penis. <laughs> just keeps bleeding and bleeding. Ah. Yeah, it's I think I will say that was probably the first time um I'd ever seen anything like that in a mm. film yeah. and i think that that was definitely the scene that i vividly remember and i can remember the visitation back to the cave later on with the crab as well like those <laughs> two scenes where we see that the the prosthetic penis like in the cave just <laughs> just just there like i don't know you don't i i, I think Dawn's screaming, I think, as much as probably the audience would have been in the cinema at the time, yeah. which is quite funny because she's just as horrified by what she's done as we are. Um, but yeah, I, I think the prosthetic work was decent if we're looking yeah. at it like on a... It was good. It, 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 it looked convincing. It looked yeah. convincing. It looked like a penis. Um, again, here's the thing, though. Apparently there were, uh, apparently, uh, there were five different prosthetics to each kind of match the men's own genitalia, at least. Wow. In terms of, in terms of girth and ball size, right? <laughs> apparently. <laughs> uh, apparently it took him about two hours to put it on every time for that scene, to put two hours. So it's like, you have to put the padding on, then the prosthetic on, doing that for two hours to get the thing. Yes. It's horrendous. And remember, it ha- it comes in an actual pump for bleeding blood. So there's a little pump going through in the back where you're just like, pss, 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 pss. That, that's the sound like afterwards that stuck with me. The it's just like the- pumping. <laughs> yeah. You just oh, kept hearing no! the blood pumping. It was just, oh, it was dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Uh, but hey, he deserved it. He was yeah, absolutely, the thing is like, he, he deserved it. He was a dick. the pun. He's literally a dick. <laughs> well, he's lost it now. Um, and so he, so basically by this point, he's terrified. And he jumps, he jumps, he jumps into the water and tries to swim away, but we never see it. So by this point, yeah. and this is one thing I find quite interesting about this movie, and I have to give it props, is mm-hmm. that this movie does not in any shape or form, in a weird way, doesn't linger too much on the idea of of anything like victim shaming or anything like that. Mm-hmm. This feels like a genuine, almost to a point, a genuine reaction to someone going through that kind of experience for the first time. Yeah. Absolutely. I think as well, we, we stick with Dawn, don't we, throughout the whole thing, which is which is good. Yeah. Um, because I don't think, yeah, at any point do we stray away. And I don't think at any point do we think that the 
the other people uh, are necessarily good people. No. <laughs> Which is good. Oh, by the way, we have to also mention that the mum is sick, which we had to make a note of because we had to come back yeah, to that bit at some point. There's a whole kind of subplot, isn't there, with the, the mum being being sick, sick um, which is quite sad. Yeah, <laughs> so the mum's sick in, uh, throughout all this. So she sometimes just like bl- blasts music out loud or does stuff ju- just to keep her just going for a while. And then she, uh, so Dawn's having a shower and then there's one shot where the music just cuts and she's just sitting, or sit- sitting in the shower, just toweled up, just mm-hmm. just... Con- concerned and curious and weirded out. So the rest of them. So by this point, because he's she, she she's a survivor of this rape. Mm-hmm. Um, she's now just trying to figure out what the fuck happened. Like, yeah. where the, like did that really happen? Does it happen often? What's happening? Because she's never really had. Because being so sexually repressed, she has no idea how her body works. Well, I think that's that links in obviously though with the education side of things. Because yeah. I mean, even going through puberty myself, there's a lot that changes that you have zero control over. Yeah. Like hair happens and and all these fluids are involved now. And you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like when when what is this alchemy? And I think that is is the huge kind of thing at mm. that point is she has this thing inside her yeah. that she knows zero about mm-hmm. and has zero control over now yeah uh, well at least she thinks for the time being until she <laughs> does find out because here's a bit here's, here's a bit i find quite interesting she gets a textbook right mm-hmm. i love the fact she gets a textbook and she puts underwater trying to reveal the picture because i think again like a, th- this could be partly parenting but also school or whatever no one ever sat there and said this is what your vagina is supposed to look like and so, exactly. so she she pulls so she puts on the water to get rid of the sticker. She looks at it and says, "Huh," and she's sitting there going like, "Okay." So she's realizing, well, we don't have any. So there's nothing here that would insinuate that I could chop off a penis with my yeah. own. No, because she might think that that's just a general thing that all women have. <laughs> like, yeah, this is just what happens on your first time. <laughs> yeah, everyone, every, everyone get their penis chopped. You know, that's that's a norm. Um, oh dear. Oh god. Oh, I, I I know some people might be into teeth, but not that way. Um, no. <laughs> wow. Wow. This, this movie, podcast man. is taken as a turn. Oh, this My movie, bad. Like, what am I supposed to not say? It, <laughs> Right, oh, I'm getting I'm hyperventilating. Anyway, you're getting very hot there, aren't you? I'm getting, really hot. I'm getting steamy here. Yeah, um, man. Um, all right. <laughs> I mean, like my second favorite scene in the movie is when she goes to the gynecologist. My lord, it's, I mean, I don't know. I I feel like women have to go through so much more than men yeah. like, in terms of all of that stuff getting examined and, and things like mm-hmm. I don't feel like I mean I just speak for me I've not really had to go for that many checkups involving that area mm. um whereas like obviously with women you have kind of um just periods being a thing yeah cervical smears pregnancy that whole <sighs> thing like it's it's terrifying on its own <laughs> just to be a woman and i don't know i think that scene was done incredibly well you know the way the camera kind of pans up her body and she doesn't know what to do with her legs and the stirrups and everything and i I seem to remember i feel like that was a clip from the trailer yeah like because him saying oh i won't buy and then he puts the gloves on and and you're like okay you won't but she will so i know right (laughs) yeah Uh, just absolute creep absolute creep and this is the thing for me (laughs) Like, can we talk very briefly about the acting in this movie overall? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, <laughs> the Doctor is the best uh, summary of this for me. It is so, it's a combination of good campy and just downright bad acting, like, overall. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. couple, like, 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 you know, the abstinence couple are the worst. I hate them. They are all <laughs> wooden and have no, like, anything. The Doctor is it's it's almost he's he's so campy in his delivery of anything where it doesn't need to be and i'm yeah i'm not sure where and again again i'm not sure if it's a directorial choice of whether this needs to be a comedy at this point or <laughs> not i don't know what it is i think that whole scene is basically although it is kind of terrifying in many ways i think also it is just pure humor like mm. from start to finish yeah uh, and i think the setup of it is um because it's just so caricature isn't it like yeah. the the process of getting the gloves on and then ultimately taking them off unfortunately oh, but it, it's, i hate that it is just it's 
it makes you feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, I think it gives you permission to absolutely piss yourself when <laughs> when the f- when happen. that happens. I think there might be something weird going on inside. Indeed, there is. What you're probably adapting to is womanhood. Your body is going through so many changes now. This might be a little cold. I have a hunch you are perfectly healthy. Are you sexually active? No. Yeah. Yes. In this room, there are no judgments made. So, let's test your flexibility. Ow! Just lie back and relax. Just breathe. Breathe through the pain. I can't! What you put in here? So to just to just describe to the listeners out there, um, oh, I don't believe I have to say this. This is th- this is probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been on the podcast, and I and I and I have seen and I have seen some weird shit. Um, so basically, <laughs> the gynecologist has the lube up and the ready and is trying to do an, uh, what seems to be original examination, but yeah. then takes off a glove and clearly goes right in there, and I'm talking four fingers deep. Well, yeah, I mean, we know it's four fingers because ultimately he then ends up losing four fingers. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, the four finger, it makes me laugh so much because the four finger bit is like the moment it happens. She, he's looking at his hand, pump, like bleeding, fingers are on the floor. She's <laughs> she's about to run away and he's just shouting, Vagina Dentata, it's real, it's real. <laughs> I will say, I, I did laugh out loud watching that, um, that scene again, just because I was thinking, is this something that happens in like, gynecologist school like they're like <laughs> you may come across this at some point you, and then he's just like okay well this this was me <laughs> i just i yeah absolutely insane um, uh, and very much b movie yeah b movie acting at that point and i think it leads into one of the funniest scenes then later in the operating theater yeah. when they're like are you sure you don't want to tell us how this happened <laughs> and he's like no i'm fine i'll just lay here and you can stitch my fingers back on no but here's the th- it's even funnier with that because he doesn't say anything he looks at them and he just grabs the gas mask and he's like I'm, no, put me under <laughs> put me under please yeah. i am not going to explain this to anyone absolutely not oh uh, my lord well it serves him right doesn't it for being a dirty watson scoundrel fucking creeps <laughs> uh. Um, but here's another thing I noticed as well. Every for most of the movie, every time they say the words "vagina dentata," and this is the bit mm-hmm. that kills me. And I and, and, and I, I put this up. Every time they say the word "vagina dentata," there's a musical sting. Every yeah. time that catches me off guard, and I <laughs> laugh. It literally says "vagina dentata." Da-da! It's, I saw the clip you posted on TikTok where you see that weird like statue that has the, <laughs> like just the, the the biggest vagina going but full of teeth, and just the music of that scene is just absolutely ridiculous. The toothed vagina appears in the mythology of many and diverse cultures all over the world. In these myths, the story is always the same: the hero must do battle with the woman, the toothed creature, and break her power. So, after the trip to the gynecologist, which is the worst, right? Mm-hmm. The She goes back, already kind of traumatized by two situations now. And finds the mother has now, who's incredibly ill, passed the fuck out, right? Music blasting from the brother's bedroom, who is literally shagging his girlfriend in the butt while this is happening. (laughs) It's, yeah, it's absolutely awful. I mean, I did find that whole bit kind of like heartbreaking. And I do think that, I don't know, they they didn't obviously pay too much attention to that subplot, Mm. um, but like just enough. 
Um, which I don't know, again, kind of thinking about it, it's kind of weird that the woman of the family passes away as the younger woman of the family then suddenly becomes a woman. It's yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's something there. I don't feel like it was a coincidence and mm. I feel like it was probably something that was thought about. But yeah, just if you didn't know that Brad was an absolute dick, yeah, <laughs> like that scene alone mm-hmm. with this poor woman like passed out from whatever illness she had, probably due to living next to a nuclear power plant, I might add. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's just banging away. It just does not give a fuck. It's yeah. dreadful. dreadful. Which, le- which then leads to basically her dying. She pa- she passed mm. away, which then, the you know, the father has res- hates his son for it, so you need to get out of the house because mm-hmm. quite literally, you know, you've let my wife die in a moment yeah. of crisis um, yeah. because you were too busy blasting heavy metal music and banging your girlfriend in the butt. You're clearly mm. a horrible piece of shit. And yeah. It, it 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 really just plays a lot on how much he's a piece of shit, and this is and that and that scene by the way. We'll, we'll get back to other scenes, but that scene there is where we truly find out that the whole incest angle is genuinely a thing. It's like why yeah. do you have to marry her? Because I love Dawn, and now you've made it pretty much unattainable in society without us making it weird. Yeah, because I mean. I- I, yeah, it's just just very very odd, and mm. the fact that it's it's been something that he's he's obviously repressed to some point as well, mm-hmm. like his sexual desire. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just everyone is repressed in this film. Like, can people just go and have sex, and then we wouldn't <laughs> have this problem? Like, please. Before all that, though, let's just talk about the one other weird sex scene before we go to the ending, which is <laughs> okay. Let's talk about Ryan, the creepy, Ryan. creepy Ryan. Well, this is it. Is I you kind of he's introduced in a similar sort of way as Toby, isn't he? As yeah. being this nice guy, and I think whereas with Toby it became very apparent he wasn't nice. I think before he then turned into a rapist. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that with this character, it's not as obvious. Obviously, for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. You genuinely thought he was nice, even throughout. I think I thought I thought for a while he was just naive. Like he was clever, but he was naive. Like there well, yeah. are nerdy people out there like this, right? Exactly. Who who find the whole thing awkward because because basically at this point she doesn't want to go back to the house because she doesn't want to face her brother because she's just so angry at her. She doesn't want to do. Mum, you know, mum's died in the hospital. Everything's gone kaputski. So he goes over to Ryan's place yeah. and say so like because he find Toby's body in the lake, and it's just like mm. oh oh no um so and so basically she's really like oh she he's actually dead and i may have accidentally killed the doctor so he <laughs> goes over to so she goes over to ryan who's the only other person who kind of give her any kind of attention well she literally says like i i can't tell anyone else like you're the so he's literally the only person that she has left yeah uh, i think that's what makes it even kind of more upsetting is that she's at this point where she has no one now and yeah um, yeah, he still chooses to be the absolute worst. But men in horror films. <laughs> she, after all this happened, which he literally, she literally spills all the beans about vagina and tartar and everything else and may have killed Toby and may have killed a doctor by someone yeah. doing it, whatever, and the whole hero thing and all that malarkey, right? She has a bath and says, like, here, how, uh, here's, here's, here's a pill my mum has for her nerves, right? And you think yeah. it's nice. Nah, it's a, it's a little... Uh, it's a little roofy, roofy situation. Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think on first viewing, I didn't realise that. I just thought, oh, he's just being nice because it cuts to him then after that, lighting all the candles and stuff. But then you're a bit sus because you're like, she's literally told you all of this stuff. Um, yeah. And then you're kind of setting up a romantic situation now. And, this, and for me, when I was watching the movie, I was sitting there going, dude, this is not the time. No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> she not. She comes out absolutely in a not. towel. She yeah. is traumatized. And there you are with champagne and candles. And you're sitting there <laughs> going, dude, this is not the time. And I'm not sure. And the thing is, I, was, I just thought of it as being naive, right? Mm. Like, I thought, like, maybe this is the time I can finally romance her because I like her. I want to be properly romancing her. Instead, yeah. and, 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 and it's like, no, just because she's in your house doesn't mean you can have a romantic date in your bedroom while she's in a towel. So yeah, inappropriate. This- it's just absolutely dreadful behavior, <laughs> to, 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 to be honest. Cause, cause um, this, is, this is the thing where I now think it's, and this is when I thought it was a roofie, because suddenly 
she wakes up and she's already yeah. naked with Ryan, with Ryan already naked, having vibrators and stuff, playing around, like, you know, doing sexy, sensual stuff. Like, it's yeah. nice. Like, it's the nice stuff. It isn't rapey because she has had no other experience of this, right? Yeah. Not, you know, you should have questioned first of why you why you woken up, why are you naked, and why is there a guy fingering you with a vibrator? That's already, that should be a question first. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, um, I don't know, it is kind of cleverly done because I think on the face of it, you wouldn't think that she'd been drugged mm. because it kind of comes across, you could watch it in a naive way and be like, okay, he's just being that nice guy and she's allowing this to happen and this is, but yeah. really it's it's not, it is a lot more sinister. It's, it's absolutely awful yeah. uh, because at this point she's had zero positive experiences. Yeah. And here's the thing that I think she feels liberated by this point because they do have sex <laughs> and nothing mm-hmm. happens. I think there's a line that I'm, I'm, I'm just still surprised you're alive. And she means yeah. it sincerely. <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, right. The vagina dentata thing, whatever. Yeah. And, and it being cute and playful and whatever. And cause he doesn't believe her obviously. And she's like, dude, Honestly, the last the last two times, the last two or three times people try to touch my vagina, they things have chopped. How is yours not chopped yet? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, until the next day where she says, look, I actually do need to go to the cops because I generally think I may have killed someone with my own vagina. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and so, but he's like, no, come on, baby, one more time. You know, you had a bit of fun last night. And then, I'm sorry, but what a fucking Chad idiot move to Just pick up a phone call. Absolutely awful. Yeah. Do you want to describe it's, it? Well, I think it, this is a turning point, obviously, because we've realised she's had sex and she hasn't hurt someone. So yeah. we know she does have some control or say in it then. So if she mm. is consenting, and I say that with bunny ears, that yeah. she can she can enjoy herself, be liberated, be a free woman. Yeah. So she goes into this with him suggesting having sex for the second time. She's like, yay, why not? Why don't I actually enjoy this experience? Because it's been fucking awful before this point yeah so so she's having sex um very much she's on top and in control and uh has the power in this scene yeah um and yeah like you said he gets uh, a phone call from his friend and basically decides to answer whilst he's inside her which is which is a horrible sentence to say yeah um and basically gives her a great big fuck you and says, yeah, this was a bet the whole time. I was just, I was was just basically saying that I could get you in bed with me and get laid before him. Hey loser. As we speak. Oh yeah. Yeah. Say something. What? No. You hear that? (laughs) Yes. <laughs> what was that? Oh, nothing. We made a bet. Then I could, uh, you know. <sighs> so, you made a bet about me when I had taken a sacred vow of abstinence? I had a hunch that it wasn't all that sacred. It was, though. Your mouth is saying one thing, babe, but your sweet pussy is saying something very different. Absolutely dreadful. And I think the scene as well, her performance, um, Jess Wexler's performance is yes. great because you genuinely see her heart kind of break for a minute because she's just like, for goodness sake, like <laughs> we, we had a good time. Um, and I think as well, as much as she realizes she can not hurt people if she wants to, she realizes then that she can hurt people if she wants to. <laughs> And it's fucking brilliant. And it's, it's a great little bit because when because when that happens and realize like you used me yeah. for a bet, you hear the crunch and I love the yeah. reaction. She rolls her eyes, going, "Ah oh, shit, I did it again." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think the way it's played, you don't know whether or not it was just her vagina going, "I'm going to do this for you," or whether or not she cognitively thought 
you know yeah. what? I'm going to do this. It's kind of, I don't know if she's so in touch with her body that, that yeah. it just did it on its own. I think, I think maybe, <laughs> maybe it's more the idea that now she's realizing yeah. that the body knows when something, when she feels angry and pissed off. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and then basically at this point, it's hilarious this because she walks out proud and strong while Ryan's just bleeding out in the bed holding. It's so graphic as well that, that, because there is a full spurt on that, on this (laughs) one, isn't there? (laughs) Full spurt to camera. I can remember watching it and just going, oh my God, that is vile. And Um, and you can see him trying to reattach it. Oh, it's just like this little bit in a condom, isn't it? Yes, it's just like you try. It's like there's no way, and it's and then it cuts to and then it cuts to him at one point in the hospital with someone trying to say, "I think there must be a story here." It's like, yeah, there is a story here. And then I think the female surgeon as well goes, "It's hardly worth it," and then they all laugh, which I think is is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. then leads to really much the final showdown where Mm -hmm. she goes over to her stepbrother and Mm -hmm. literally offers herself to him because we now know because basically he is the reason why mum's dead because he's because he's just completely been neglecting all this nonsense and so yeah you you can see she's become a badass. She's wearing like she's wearing a particular dress on purpose. She steals a cigarette off his mouth and puffs away, and literally mm-hmm. just gets ready to. And I lo- and I like in the bit where she's saying like she she's already trying to demand dominance by trying to be on top of him first. Yeah, absolutely. It's I think yeah I think ultimately we've known literally from that opening scene this is where the film's going because yeah. I think as well it is a film that you go into knowing that there's going to be some some vagina penis chompy action as well so <laughs> I think from that scene and with him being set up as such a as much of an asshole as he is yeah you no know this is where the film's leading to so by this point I think you're almost happy. <laughs> Mm. that we're like here and you know what to expect um yeah but but yeah i i don't know i i loved watching it just knowing that he was going down <laughs> I, yeah, it, it's it's the thing is it's not like in other horror movies right where you kind of mm. already you, you think there's going to be a struggle right and you know that you know like will the last final girl properly survive it intact mm-hmm. right yeah in this one you go in you already know that she is going to end up on top quite literally in some cases mm-hmm. and um <laughs> <laughs> and so it gets to the part where she, where he's like no i so again the battle the the fight here is that she says no i'm gonna do it my way i have a particular thing let me be on top and you can yeah. see how her eyes are staring at each. Their eyes are staring at each other, and you can see how he, she's blank and cold, and he's nervous and like trying and trying to like act tough but can't. And then the yeah. chomp happens. Mm. And well, he comes to the realization, doesn't he? Yeah. As they're obviously in kind of mid intercourse, yeah. he then suddenly remembers because I think he puts his finger to her lips, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, there's that whole image of his stumpy finger like against her actual teeth and then he realizes it's not there. oh shit that's not where she bit me and then there's the crunch absolutely and I, I, I do think cinematically it was done really really well with mm. that whole recollection and then there being that kind of yeah that, that crunch I, I, I can I just say it's disgusting what happens because then she crawls out of the bed and literally opens her legs and it just yeah. drops on the floor absolutely dreadful absolutely <laughs> dreadful the, the dog then comes out and yeah. the dog wolf is called mother of all things. So, <laughs> so mother comes out and eats. And literally, it's a funny thing because because there's always a little standoff between Brad and the dog going like, "Don't do it, no, don't you dare!" Don't, don't. And then he eats it. <laughs> interesting factoid about this. Okay, interesting. An actual factoid. Been holding on for a okay. while. So a lot of the stuff, all the other penises were actually just rubber, right? This one, okay. the pe- the one with the piercing prop. Uh, detached penis was a cust was custom made it was a custom made for the film it's actually cake from a local bakery can you imagine getting that order it's like okay we've got we've got three birthdays and a penis to make today <laughs> so it's basically it's made out of icing and sugar right so the dog could eat it and swallow it if it needed to Oh, okay. Well, at least no dogs were harmed in the making of this scene. But it's just, imagine, yeah, the local bakery. So this is in Austin, Texas, where they filmed it. So imagine going over there and say, look, we need, um, 
we need so a so conservative as well in Texas. So like, like, look, we need we need just this a tiny penis with a with with, 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 with a you know it, it basically it's Prince Albert. We need the Prince yeah. Albert um, on there. Could you could you bake this for me, please? Wow, I'd be interested to know as well if the 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 dog kind of coughing up the bell end was literally an accident or if if they did that somehow because that kind of makes that scene all the more. I think kind of gruesome. It, yeah. it reminded me of um, a scene from Piranha 3D yeah. where the piranhas eat, eat the penis and then cough it back up and it's like in 3D in your face. It's just, <laughs> it's just to really hammer home that as a, as a male, yeah. <laughs> you need to feel what's going on. There it is. Just the bell end flying across the screen. <laughs> it's there just you go. The worst case of the windmill. Ah, oh, but Christ. <laughs> but yeah. That's and then pretty much just how the movie ends by this point. Everyone, she decides to go say, fuck this life. She goes off, starts hitchhiking away across America, gets picked up by a creepy old man at the end. And uh, again... <laughs> yeah, it's just wow, that, that man. I mean, one, the audition for that, that world <laughs> <laughs> must have been interesting. Um, but oh my Lord, I've never seen someone so scary in a film. I completely forgot about the, the weird tongue action he has at the end. It's, it's so, so awful. Imagine how free she must be, though, as a character now. Like, I, I could do whatever. Like, no one can touch me. And this is the thing. She realises, because when the creepy old man locks her in the car and doing mm. the weird tongue action, you can Ugh. see her look in her face where she just does a slight little... Uh, she raised her eyebrow a bit. She goes like, oh, mm. oh, but now, oh, I, I can do this. Not yeah. only can I do this, is I should no longer feel threatened anymore because I have a weapon against creepy old men with tongue actions now. I Absolutely. I mean, this is the thing, though. It, it, it begs, obviously, the moral question because although she wanted to go to the police and, and obviously confess to these things, these things only happen when people do things against her will or she doesn't give consent or... I don't know, they're, they're being predators or rapists or, or whatever. Yeah. So it does beg the question, like, if people weren't doing this stuff to her, everyone would be fine. <laughs> so, if, all, so, if all men could just chill. <laughs> yeah, if, if men could just not be dicks, that'd be great. Um, I think that, that was my takeaway from this film, was just men are the absolute worst. So. Men are the worst. <laughs> That's literally the movie. Oh boy. Um, so yeah. <laughs> wow. That, wow, is it right? So we are gonna now review, we're now gonna grade this now on the trashometer. Trashometer. So okay. the trashometer. Um if this is the first time listening to us, welcome, and I'm so sorry you have to go through this with me. Uh so in order to sort of we review things a little bit differently around here. We don't do a we don't do A's, A pluses, or star ratings. We do something through the trashometer, where we we basically try and figure out where this movie falls under the scale of trash. So first of all, at the very bottom end, we have tame. Tame basically means that it's that it was just boring. It wasn't it wasn't really entertaining. It wasn't fun in any kind of way. It was just dull, right? It was just dull as dishwater. Then you got a tiny bit trashy, where we know we're having fun with it. We're having fun with it, but we know it could be more. There's more. We're craving more from this, and it's just not giving us enough. Then you've got trash, which is the perfect trash. It is basically it's the golden goose. It's the perfect sweet spot. It is. It is like going to the dentist and make and having that checkup being perfectly fine. It's that kind of thing. Mwah, perfect dentures. <laughs> then you've got too trashy. Too trashy is even though we're having fun with it, we're getting angry at it. We're getting a little frustrated with it. We're, we're we're starting to we're starting to crack a bit and then there is torture torture is it it was a literal torture to sit through it was not really fun to get through we were getting annoyed frustrated angry it wasn't we weren't having a good time and so liam as our, as my guest where do you think this falls on the trashometer I think it's, it's a tricky one because i think the film i'd split it into two i mm-hmm. think after she discovers she has teeth in her vagina, I'd comfortably sit it in trash, as in, like, we're having a good time, it's A-OK, it, it's it's good fun, it knows what it is, it's um, it, it's, a, it's a weird movie, but I, I can enjoy it. Yeah. I think prior to that, and I think if we look at some of the 
filmmaking decisions, casting, all of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's maybe too trashy. It's a bit frustrating yeah. in, in some ways. Um, I don't think it's... I don't know. The opening is a little bit boring. <laughs> I think a little bit. It, but... it's, it takes a while to get to where it needs to go. Um, but once it's there, it's a fun ride. So overall, I'd probably say... I'd, I'd say it's trash. <laughs> you know what I think? Yeah, I, th I, I, I think I would fall under this as well. But you know what I think it would be if I was going to put it on, like, on the thing? I'd put it on, like, the very low end of too trashy. Like, it... Yes, yeah. Like, it's... it's it could have been if the first half was just as embracing of the nonsense that happens in the second half. This Absolutely. would have been downright perfect, right? Yeah. But it doesn't. It takes a good f half an hour to 40 minutes of being around people you genuinely just don't like being around with. Mm -hmm. The weird choices, the the odd tone, you don't know where it's going, and yeah. you're feeling genuinely uncomfortable with it until it gets to the good half, which is yeah. right, which, lich, which is literally right after the, it's weird to say how it gets good right after the, after the rape scene. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, yeah, past the rape scene, absolutely fine, yeah. Yeah, after um, the rape scene, it gets... Like, Leg legitimately <laughs> Legit that's why it changes scene, perfectly it actually becomes fun and silly and even even with the creepy undertone you're finally mm -hmm. feeling like that sense of embracing that the movie's finally embracing how weird this is and yeah. I think if it was like that from the beginning perfect mm -hmm. but I think because of this would we agree that we would put it on the slight low end of two traffic yeah definitely because I think it has great qualities but it does leave a bad taste in your in your mouth again <laughs> pardon the pun so many, bad, oh, this... so many teeth mouth and vagina related puns in this podcast episode so much sexual innuendo in this, in this thing if, uh, so if, if any, you get any me listeners... on a podcast you're going to get innuendos Johan you should know this I'm right very now. much aware <laughs> I will say one thing any listeners out there if you end up listening to this could you please send me something on social media about how many sexual innuendos are in this episode I want to I want a number I think next episode you should have an innuendo meter that, that should be your new thing <laughs> just, so just many, how, how weird and rude can you make the episode <laughs> and so yeah on that note then this this movie very very nicely falls under uh, under too trashy so well done Too trashy. Cool. So, uh, we're now about to wrap things up. So, this is our time when we do our plug ins. So, in other words, then, you, Liam, obviously, do you have anything else you want to plug? Um, I, I, well, again, obviously, thanks so much for having me on this episode. It's certainly been an interesting one. I'll say that, Johan. You yeah. always uh, give me the, the weird stuff. Um, <laughs> but if, if, if people want to find out a little bit more about what we do, um, then you can find us on social media, just at Super Freak Media, all the good platforms. Um, we have the monthly podcast, like I said. We have a monthly blog as well that Charlie, uh, one of our team members, runs, which is great. And plenty of short film content for you to enjoy and lots that we're hoping to get made this year. Like, Ooh. it's so frustrating as a filmmaker to have gone through this lockdown mm. and not have been able to have made stuff. Um, so hopefully gearing back up and we'll have new new uh, short films out very, very soon. Very exciting. I, I love your short films. They're always the great stuff. And I remember, Thanks, and, I, and I still use them when I use my teaching. So here's an example of a good horror short. I use some of the great <laughs> ones. One of my favorite ones is still the one about the killer bath, where basically it's just where yes. she melts in the bathtub. Get, get I wet. use that all get the time <laughs> because I say, that is freaky in a minute. If, she, if he can do that, come on, that's freaky in a minute, mate. Oh, so good. I think we need to uh, we need to bring back that one minute nightmare series because that was hella good fun. Just to do random stuff for like every month was uh, was good. So watch this space. There mm -hmm. might be a sequel. Oh, <laughs> it's in a shower this time. Too. Jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, I'm just imagining like that. It's it's it, it's a hot tub, but then it just explodes like 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 like, like in Nightmare on Elm Street. Just Absolutely. <laughs> just lava. Absolutely. Oh, Oh, no. <laughs> you heard it here first, but um, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, and like I said, thank you very much. And so uh, it's, 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 it's been nice because I did the previous episode with uh, with Greg and I've done now this episode with you. Yes, Ed is Ed is not here and I feel like, and, and it's a shame that he's not about. But I'll say one thing though. I'm kind of glad that he's not here for this one. I kind of get a weird feeling <laughs> that he would have just hated the entire endeavor. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like he should 
catch up on any film as he's missed. So I feel like Teeth should be something that he has to watch before he rejoins the podcast. So. Happy, I want to I wanna say, like, look, <laughs> get, 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 like, you're happy he's to give me your hot take. Give me your hot take on this movie. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And if, if you haven't watched it at home, you need to watch this film because it's friggin' weird. <laughs> we'll wrap it up from here. And so until, so until next time, keep an eye on your trash. There might be some treasure in there. See you next time.